Hello and welcome to the Widow's Well. Today I want to read for you an article um, in my blog which I wrote uh, called The Three Great Deceptions of the Church. Now um, this little blog is also called The Widow's Well and I will put the link in the description box below for the article and I will also add the link from now on in the description of my channel. Um, I don't have many articles yet there but I'm hoping to write some more as time goes by so it's just a, a start um, to making a little blog there also but this article is called the three uh, great deceptions of the church. So now I will read this article for you. If you prefer, you can just go to the description box and read it for yourself. But if you'd like to listen to um, it, then I'm going to read it for you. It says there, I recently watched a teaching of Chuck Baldwin. Now, Chuck Baldwin is a a pastor and I have a link in my playlist to some of his teachings. Now I don't uh, by that mean that I agree with everything that this pastor teaches. I just think that his teaching on the Israel of God is um, a very good teaching to have as background in order to understand the Bible better. So I did um put that in the playlist if anybody should like to go and spend the time because it's many hours um, but you know in order to really understand the Bible um, and understand the will of the Lord and understand prophecy you really need to put in the hours because we are told to study and show ourselves approved. So I, I found that he really did a good job those are basic understandings people just don't have when they are in the church. They don't teach you that in the church. Um, if you go to Matthew 13, you'll see that the Lord um, said to the disciples that they had been chosen to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and that most didn't understand what Jesus was saying in his parables. So in order to really understand the Lord and be a disciple of his, um, it, it requires that you actually put in time to know the scriptures and to seek the face of the Lord. Okay, so let's read this again. I recently watched the teaching of Chuck Baldwin with regards to the three great deceptions in church history, and it prompted me to write this post. I believe that scripture foretells these three great deceptions in not only the book of Revelation and the New Testament scripture, but also in typology in Matthew 4, when Satan tempts Christ, and in Peter's three denials of the Lord. Today I want to show you how we can see these three main deceptions in these two aspects. The three main deceptions according to Pastor Baldwin are 1. Phariseeism or the Judaizers of the early church, two, Roman Catholicism in the Middle Ages, and three, Christian Zionism of our day. Of course, there have been many heresies and false teachings, but I also see the same thing as the pastor, namely they fall under these three broad categories. This brings to my mind three woes, three unclean frogs. Now, firstly, let us see these three main deceptions in Matthew 4, where Christ is tempted by Satan. Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, Command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, 
For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up, on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only will you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. I believe the first temptation to Jesus to make bread of stones corresponds to the first temptation to the newly formed body of believers, the temptation of the Judaizers, and that temptation was to live by the law, to make bread from stones. In 2 Corinthians 3 verse 7, we see the law is called the ministration of death written and engraved on stones. The law was added because of transgressions, yet the Pharisees and religious leaders had created from these stones a system that could never spiritually raise up the people to spiritual life. That is what I believe is possibly one of the deeper meanings of trying to make bread or spiritual food from stones, the law and man-made laws and doctrines. But we know that Christ is the true bread from heaven, and he also gave the manna in the wilderness, and not Moses. Christ is the only one given to us by the Father, who has the spiritual sustenance we need to grow spiritually and enter the kingdom of heaven. John 6 verse 32 to 33. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. That is why Paul in exasperation asks why on earth the foolish Galatians wanted to return to the beggarly things, the lesser things, in exchange for what is glorious. They preferred stones to bread, And they thought they could make bread from these stones. The believers in the first century were already bombarded with the so-called Judaizers, or as Paul called them, the circumcision. They wanted to add things of the law to faith in Christ, for they could not let go of the traditions of their fathers. This included not only cultural traditions, but most of all the religious traditions. To this day, this deception is one of the biggest temptations for believers to fall from grace and back into works, to make from stones our bread and rely on our own righteousness by works, rather than on the righteousness Christ alone imputes to us, which he is able to do because of his finished work he did on behalf of us. The second temptation of Satan to Christ was to jump down from the temple. Satan said God would send angels to protect Christ, upon which Christ responded, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. I believe that this temptation corresponds to both Roman Catholicism and its esoteric form called Gnosticism. The second great deception was also present right from the start, but is clearly manifested in the Roman Catholic idolatrous works-based system. In Hebrews 3, we can clearly see tempting God is connected to unbelief, which results in not entering rest. Not entering rest spiritually corresponds not coming to Christ for salvation, but taking his name in vain and having a form of godliness with a righteousness of your own, based on works. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works forty years. 
Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who would not obey? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Hebrews 3, verse 7 to 11 and verse 18 to 19. I also think to jump down from the pinnacle of the temple brings to mind falling from grace. It involves exchanging our lofty position of being heavenly minded. In other words, being seated in heavenly places, we can also say as the scripture puts it. In exchange for being of the earth earthy, that is being carnally minded. Another manifestation of tempting God is to live lawlessly by embracing worldliness and lascivious living. All things we found and still find in Catholicism and now also in her daughters, the modern churches. These have all tempted God by holding a form of godliness, yet denying the Lord in works and even in speech. The final temptation to Jesus was to bow down and worship the devil in exchange for earthly kingdoms. In fact, to be given all the kingdoms of the world. The third major deception and great temptation has slowly been manifesting in the form of Christian Zionism. Christian Zionism enables Jewish Zionism, which certainly believes that ruling all the kingdoms of the world is what Jews are called to do. The Christian Zionist supports this terrible thing because of believing lies and not believing or understanding what Christ meant when he said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. John 18 verse 36. Now consider Peter and how Jesus told Peter that he would betray him three times that very night before the rooster crowed. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Luke 22 verse 31 to 32. The night represents the time Christ is on his long journey, the time between the first spiritual resurrection, the rise of Christianity, due to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the second coming. The three betrayals of Peter may spiritually represent these three great deceptions by which the body of Christ will be tempted of Satan. Unlike Jesus who resisted Satan, the church will be overcome three times, but each time the church will overcome Satan in the end. While we still find Judaizers and popery to this very day, they have both been overcome and a public spectacle made of them. For Judaism, this was in the first century and for popery at the beginning of the modern age. Both these beasts lost their dominion, but they were allowed to live for a while longer. Likewise, Zionism and the enemies using Zionism against the church will eventually be overcome. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And then yeah, you can see Pastor Baldwin's um, video, of which I will also uh, put the link in the description box if you want to listen to that video. As I say, I don't, uh, if I share something, it doesn't mean that I agree with everything. And remember, I am your fellow disciple, so I am just learning. Um, and everything that, um, you know, that I share with you, I ask that you test every spirit, also everything that I say. Um, and if I share something, you know, um, we are still in this body of flesh and we make errors. But if you have the Holy Spirit in you, the Holy Spirit will help you to discern truth more and more as you learn to rightly divide the scriptures.